Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Jason's story time number three Now today I'm going to Today, I'm going to read a, a, a book which has been recommended by Rachel, and it's Denslow's Humpty Dumpty, adapted and illustrated by W. Dot w. Denslow. You thought I was going to do an internet thing, didn't you? You thought I was going to go www. No, that wasn't his name. So this is from G.W. Dillingham Co. Publishes New York. Doesn't say what year it was. Oh, 1903. It's an out of copyright book, so um, like all the books I'm going to be reading, it'll be out of copyrights. So yeah, there you go. So the point of this and all of the other recordings I do in this series is to tell you a lovely bedtime story. And so that you can get all comfortable and cosy and have that warm, fuzzy feeling inside. And uh, you can just fall asleep. So I hope that this is useful. So the book, as I said, is called Humpty Dumpty. And I'm hoping I can actually... Okay. Right. So here we go. It's not a long book, so it shouldn't take long to read. So get yourselves nice and comfortable. Uh, only listen when you can safely close your eyes, because having your eyes closed is probably the best way to fall asleep. You know, mm, yeah, okay. So, Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty was a smooth, round little chap with a whining smile, a winning smile, and a great golden heart in his broad. Tip, oh, breast, his broad breast. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to read it, but you know, uh, I have vision issues. Don't mock me, it's vision issues. You know, I have to wear glasses, it's a disability, so please, you know, keep you judging to yourself. Anyway, only one thing. Only one thing troubled Humpty, and that was that he might f that he might fall and crack his thin white skin. So he's an egg. Okay. I imagine that would be quite worrying, wouldn't it? you were an egg falling over and cracking would be probably at the top of the list um, anyway he wished to be hard he really wanted to be hard all the way through before he felt his heart wobble 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 when he he felt his heart wobble when he walked all man about. 
out. So off he went to the black hen for advice. This hen was kind and wise. So she just, so she was just the one for him to go to with his trouble. Your father, old Humpty, said the hen, was very foolish and would take warning from no one. You know what the poet said of him? Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men cannot put Humpty together again. So you see, he came to a very bad end. Just because he was reckless and would not take a hint from anyone. He was much worse than a scrambled egg. That's not an insult you get very often, is it? You know what, mate? You're way worse than a scrambled egg. The king, his horses and his men did all they could for him. But his case was hopeless. And the hen shook her head. And the hen shook her head sadly. That's a very long sentence, wasn't it? Have you not heard of paragraphs? Or full stops. So basically this story is not about the Humpty from the Rhyme. It's about his son. I guess Humpty Dumpty Jr. What you must do, continued the hen, as she wiped a tear from her bright blue eye. So she was laughing at him, basically mocking him is to go to the farmer's wife next door and tell her to put you into a pot of boiling hot water. Your skin is so hard and smooth it will not hurt you and when you come out you may do as you wish. Nothing can break you. You can tumble about to your heart's content and you will not break not even dent yourself. So Humpty rolled in next door. Rolled in. He rolled in. He's got legs. Why didn't he just walk? And told the farmer's wife that he wanted to be put into boiling hot water as he was too brittle to be used for any use to himself or to anyone else. To be of use to anyone. Oh. Put himself down, I think he had very low self-esteem. For an egg, anyway. Indeed you shall. Wait a minute, okay, sorry. Do a different voice. Indeed you shall, said the farmer's wife. What is more, I shall wrap you up in a piece of spotted calico. So that you will have a nice coloured dress. You will come out looking as bright as an Easter egg. What's a calico? Asked uh, Bugs Bunny. No, wait a minute. Different story. So she tied him up in a grey new rag and dropped him into the copper kettle of boiling water that was on the hearth or hearth. It was pretty hot for Humpty at first, but soon he got used to it, and he was happy. For he felt himself getting harder every minute. So I guess that was the kind of the a hot boiling, a half of hot boiling water it was the original Viagra, I guess. He did not have to stay in the water long before he was quite well done and as hard as a bro <laughs> oh dear, okay. And a 
as hard as a brick all the way through. So untying the rag, he jumped out of the kettle, as tough and as bright as any hard-boiled egg. The calico, still don't know what that is, had marked him from head to foot with big, bright red spots. He was as gaudy as a circus clown, and as nimble and merry as one. The farmer's wife shook with laughter to see the pranks of the little fellow, for he frolicked and frisked about from table to chair and mantelpiece. He would fall from the shelf to the floor just to show how hard he was. Reminds me of when I was at school. And after thanking the good woman most politely for the service she had done him, he walked out into the sunshine on the clothesline like a rope dancer to see the wide, wide world. Of the travels of Humpty Dumpty much could be said. He went east, west, north, and south. He sailed the seas. He walked and rode on the land through all the countries of the earth and all his life long. He was a happy and content. He wasn't a happy and content. He was happy. What's a man of you? Hey, I'm happy and content. And all his life long he was happy and content. I think this might be the end of the year. Uh, it's quite a short book. Sometimes as a clown in a circus who'd make fun uh, for old and young. Again as a wandering minstrel. Uh, I'm not sure if that's PC twanged the strings of his banjo and sung a merry song and so on through all his travels he would lighten the cares of others and make them forget their sorrows a bit like me really isn't it very much like uh, Humpty Dumpty well, I looked like him and fill every heart with joy. But wherever he went, in sunshine or, or in rain, he never forgot to sing the praises of the wise black hen, nor the good, kind farmer's wife, who had started him in life. Hardened against sorrow, with a big heart in the right place for the cheer and comforts of others. Uh, that's kind of the whole thing, that's it. Um, I could do an abbreviated version of this, an abridged version. Humpty Dumpty's dad was scared he'd break his shell. He asked for advice, got told to get hard boiled, got hard boiled, and then spent the rest of his life acting silly and cheering people up that was what two sentences got a whole book out of it well a whole book 15 pages let's have a look at the deed description the 
Is anyone asleep yet? Well, I don't. I think I prefer the original one, if I'm honest with you. The original. I mean, some of it's unrealistic, though, okay. Walking on a on a clothesline, like, uh, you know, balancing tightrope. Come on. I've never seen an egg do that, have you? Very unrealistic. It's got a picture of him playing the banjo. Have you ever seen an egg play a banjo? And I've got another one. It's him. He's riding on a mouse, jumping over something. I mean, really? Who are they aiming at this at? Oh, it's got another one. He's playing a banjo again. And there's an old man with a... Almost... You know, almost old... old, old hearing things and my almost like um, trumpets they put them in their ears so they can hear or he's doing that so he can hear Humpty Dumpty Junior looks like he's singing as well so that, oh, that's nice oh there's a picture of him at the end and he's sitting on a wall because his confidence has increased, hasn't it? And I think that's what the, that's what it's really about. It's not really about him going from soft to hard, the need to get hard. He had a problem with uh, with softness. He needed he needed the help to get it hard, so he went to a specialist. And the, spe the specialist gave him some advice what he needed to do. So he did what was necessary to get hard. And I think there was something about not being able to get hard that really affected his self-esteem. And once he was able to get hard and stay hard and that seemed to be the thing it wasn't just about getting hard it was staying hard that seemed to be the uh, thing for him so once he found out how to stay hard he could then go on his adventures and do all the things that he'd always wanted to do that he wasn't able to do before he was, you know, before he was able to get hard, he must have written a list of things he wanted to do. So let's have a look at those things. Um, yeah. So when he actually first got hard, the first thing he did was he was as gaudy as a circus clown and as nimble as a merry one. And the farmer's wife shook with laughter to see the pranks of the little fellow because the little fellow was now hard instead of being soft like before. For he frolicked and frisked about from table to chair and the mantelpiece. He would fall from the shelf to the floor just to show how hard he was. And after making the good woman and thanking the good woman most politely, Thank you for the service that she had done for him, for getting him hard. He walked out into the sunshine on the clothesline like a rope dancer to see the wide, wide world. It's 
So he sailed the seas, he walked and rode on the land through all the countries of the earth. And all his life long he was happy and content, sometimes like a clown in a circus. He would make fun for old and young again as a wandering minstrel. He twanged the strings of his banjo and sung a merry song. And so on through all his travels he would lighten the cares of others and make them forget their sorrows. So his hardness really did help other people as well as himself. And he's also telling people the reason I'm so hard is because of the farmer's wife. She did this. She had started started him in his life hardened against sorrow. Ah. This is a picture at the end. Humpty Dumpty's sitting on the wall and there's a little child there and Humpty Dumpty's got his hand out and you can you can only see this picture but you you know he's about to push the kid off the wall. Oh almost feel like I should uh Read another one. It wasn't quite. Wasn't quite it, was it? It wasn't quite the uh, library. Oh no. Oh. Read classic books. Classic books. Children's books, kids, the apple, a Christmas carol. So maybe Anne of Green Gables. What's this Aesop's fables? Are they any good? Do you know? Page two. Oh, Aesop's Fables, four hundred and thirty-eight. Really, really You're joking me. Four hundred and thirty-eight. Come on. Okay, so let's see how long. Uh, how many pages? Two. Two frogs. Okay, let's give that a go. The two frogs. So this is called The Fables of Aesop or Aesop. The two frogs. Okay, you ready? One Hot summer. The lake in which two frogs lived was completely dried up, and they were obliged to set off in search of water elsewhere. Coming to a deep and deliciously cool well. One of the frogs proposed that they should jump in at once. Wait a bit, cried the other. 
If that should dry up, how could we get out again? Um. Really? That, that's it. That's the whole. That's the whole story. Really, it's not a story. Oh, okay. That's not a story. That's weird. How can that? That can't be the whole story, surely. Anyway, this is number two. This is. Jupiter and the camel. The camel once upon a time complained to Jupiter that he was not as well served as he ought to be in the means of defence and offence. The bull, said he, oh, nibble, nibble. <laughs> the bull, said he, has horns, the boar tusks, and the lion and tiger formidable claws and fangs that make them feared and respected on all sides. I, on the other hand, have to put up with the abuse of all who choose to insult me. Jupiter angrily told him that if he would take the trouble to think, he would see that he was endowed with qualities shared by no other beast, but that as a punishment for his unreasonable importunity, Here forward his ears should be shortened. <laughs> well, firstly, I don't know what important importunity importunity <laughs> his ears would be shortened. Oh, I don't know why. Um, these are weird. The lion hunting with other beasts. A lion, a heifer, a goat, and a sheep once agreed to share whatever each might catch in hunting. A fine, fat stag fell into a snare set by the goat who thereupon called the rest together. The lion divided the stag into four parts. Taking the best pieces for himself, he said, This is mine, of course, as I am the lion. Taking another portion, he added, This too is mine by right. The right, if you must know, of the strongest. Further putting aside a third piece, That's for the most valiant, said he, and that's for the remaining part. Touch it if you dare. Yeah, I'm not sure if that fills me with... Uh, Good vibes. <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay. The next one. The stag looking into the pool. The stag looking into the pool. The stag. Okay, so I won't bring it again. A stag drinking at a clear pool admired the handsome look of his spreading antlers, but was much displeased 
at the slim and ungainly appearance of his legs. What a glorious pair of branching horns, he said. How gracefully <laughs> they hang over my forehead. What an agreeable air they give my face. But as for my spindle shanks of legs, I am heartily ashamed of myself. The words were scarcely out of his mouth when he saw some huntsmen and a pack of hounds making towards him. His despised legs soon placed him at a distance from his followers. But, on entering the forest, his horns got entangled at every turn, so that the dogs soon reached him and made an end of him. Mistaken fool that I was, he exclaimed. Had it not been for these wretched horns, my legs would have saved my life. Okay. Um, yeah, that's quite um, deep, isn't it? I'm just trying to think of some part of me that I like, that I think, oh, that's nice. I used to like me bum. No, I can't think of anything. Yeah. I think I used to have nice eyes, but I can't really see them anymore. Not that I used to be able to see them, I mean, didn't take them out and look at them, but kind of covered up by my glasses. Yeah. Okay, so number four, Aesop's Fables, The Cock and the Jewel. This might be interesting. A brisk young cock, scratching for something with which to entertain his favourite hens, happened to turn up a jewel. Feeling quite sure that it was something precious, but not knowing well what to do with it. He addressed it with an air of affected wisdom as follows. You are a very fine thing, no doubt. But you are not at all to my taste. For my part, I would rather have one grain of dear, delicious barley than all the jewels in the world. That's the end of that one. Next, the wolf and the lamb. A hungry wolf one day saw a lamb drinking at a stream and wishing to frame some plausible excuse for making him pray. What do you mean by muddling the water I am going to drink? Seriously, he said to the lamb. Please, please forgive me, meekly answered the lamb. I should be sorry in any way to displease you, 
but as the stream runs through towards me, you will see that such cannot be the case. That's all very well, said the wolf. But you... <laughs> I forget which voice is which. I know. But you should know you spoke all ill of me behind my back a year ago. Nay, believe me, replied the lamb. I was, I was nor then born. He must have been your brother then, growled the wolf. It can he, it can he been, for I've never had any but others, answered the lamb. I know it is one of your lot, remained the wolf, rejoined the wolf. Rejoined? He like rejoined the conversation, like where else did he go? Going like, go to the toilet, had an Easter egg, went and played with Humpty Dumpty, I don't know. Um, I knew it was one of your lot, rejoined the wolf. So make no more much idle excuses. He then seized the poor lamb, carried him off to the woods and ate him. Bit of an overreaction, I do believe. Um, okay, the peacock's complaint, the peacock's complaint. The peacock complained to Juno that while everyone laughed at his voice, an insignificant creature like the nightingale had a note that delighted everybody. Juno, angry at the unreasonableness of his her favourite bird, scolded him in the following terms. Envious bird that you are, I am sure that you have no cause to complain. On your neck shines all the colours of the rainbow, and your extended tail shows like a mass of gems. No living being is ever good thing to share its own nature. The falcon is endowed with swiftness, the eagle's strength, the parrot's speech, and the raven the gift of augury. I don't know what that means, but it sounds good. And the nightingale with a melodious note. Why, you have both size and beauty. Cease, cease them to complain. What a gift that you have shall be taken away. It wasn't so much a story, it's just a bit of a moan, wasn't it? Okay, the cat and the ma the cat and the mice. A certain house was much infested by mice. The owner brought home a cat, a famous mouser, who soon made such havoc among the little folk that those who remained resolved that they would never leave the upper shelves. The cat grew hungry and thin in consequence, and driven to her wit's end, hung by her hind legs to a peg in the wall, and pretended to be dead. There's a picture there. Um, an old mouse came to the edge of the shelf and seeing through the deception cried out Oh, oh, Mrs. Pussy. <laughs> oh God. I must be about four years old. I'm so childish. Oh, Mrs. Pussy, we should not come near you. We should not come near you, even if your skin was stuffed with straw. Mm. That one needs work. The dog and his shadow. A dog, bearing in his mind. No, a dog. A dog. Okay, here we go. A dog, bearing in 
his mouth a piece of meat that he had stolen and was crossing a smooth stream by means of a plank. Looking in, he saw that he took to be another dog carrying another piece of meat. Snappingly, greedily, to get this as well, he let go of the meat that he had and lost it in the stream. That's the end of it. The, there is a bit left that he's missed out. Then he realised he was looking into a mirror. Okay. The next one, the ant and the fly. An ant and a fly one day disputed as to their respected merits. Vile creeping insect, said the fly to the ant. Can you for a moment compare yourself with me? I saw on the wing like a bird. I entered the palaces of kings and alight on the heads of princes, nay, of emperors. Just, um, okay. Nay, of emperors, and only quit then to join the yet more attractive brow of beauty. Besides, I visit the altars of the gods. Not a sacrifice is offered, but is first tasted by me. Every feast, too, is open to me. I eat and drink of the best, instead of living for days on two or three grains of corn as you do. That's only fine replied the ant. But listen to me. You boast of your feasting, but you know that you'll die. <laughs> Not always so choice, not always so choice, and you're all you're sometimes forced to eat what nothing should induce me to touch. As for relying on the heads of kings and emperors, you know very well that whether you pitch on the head of an emperor or of an ass, and it is often uh, on the other one. Yeah, you are shaking off from both with impatience. And then the altar of the gods, indeed. There and everywhere else you are looked upon as nothing but a nuisance. In the winter too, while I feed at my ease on the fruits of my soil, what more common than to see you, your friends, dying with cold hunger and fatigue? I lose my time now. I'm talking to you. Chattering will fill neither my bin nor my cupboard. Merry Christmas, children. <sighs> Blimey, I'll do the last one. The stag in the ox tail. A stag, hard pressed by the hounds ran for shelter 
into an ox stall, the door of which was open. One of the oxen turned round and asked him why he came to such a place as that, where he would be sure to be taken. The stag replied that he should do well enough if the oxen would not tell of him and covering himself in a heap of straw waited for the night. It's a short story but I'm lost already. Several servants and even the farm bailiff himself came and looked round but saw nothing of the stag who, as each went away, was ready to jump out of his skin for joy and warmly thanked the oxen for their silence. The ox who had spoken first to him warned him not to be too sure of his escape and said that glad as they would all be for him to get away there was a certain person still to come whose eyes were a deal sharper than the eyes of anyone who had been there yet this was the master himself who having been dining with a neighbour, looked in on his way home to see that all was all right. At a glance he saw the tips of the horns coming through the straw, whereupon he raised a hue and cry, called all his people together and made a prize of the stag. Another happy story. I'll try and finish on one that's uplifting. The frog who wished to be as big as an ox. Okay, here we go. An ox grazing in a meadow chanced to set his foot on a young frog and crushed him to death. this wasn't the cheery <laughs> the cheery one I hoped his his brothers and sisters who were playing near at once ran to tell their mother what had happened your monster that did it mother was such a size said they the mother who was a vain old thing thought that she could easily make herself as large. Was it as big as this? She said, she asked, blowing and puffing herself out. Oh, much bigger than that, replied the young frogs. Was this then? cried she, puffing and blowing again with all her might. Nay, mother, said they, if you were to try Till you burst yourself, you would never be so big. The silly old frog tried to puff herself out still more and burst herself indeed. Ah. Yeah, that that wasn't quite as uh, happy as I thought. Hmm. Ah, never mind. So I hope you've fallen asleep to all these happy stories. Happiness, happiness, sleepy, 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 happiness, 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 sleepy, 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 happiness. Fall asleep now, baby. Fall asleep now, do. Fall asleep now, baby. 
try not to think that you might need a poo. You don't really need a poo. You haven't got to get up out of bed and go to the toilet because you need to do a poo. Happy, 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 sleepy. Happy, 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 sleepy. Happy, 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 sleepy. Sleeping deeply. Like a baby. Except like a baby. You can't do the poo in your pants. You gotta go to the toilet instead. Try not to think about the toilet. Try not to think about needing a wee wee. Try not to think about the toilet. Sleep. Sleep, 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 sleep. Try not to think about needing a wee wee. Try not to think about needing a wee wee. Just ignore it. Go to sleep. Remember, you have to get up if you need a wee. If you need a wee 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 wee. Try not to think about running water. Try not to think about waterfalls. Try not to think about feeling a kettle up. Try not to think about Humpty Dumpty falling off that wall. No. Happy, 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 sleep, sleep. Happy, 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 sleep, sleep. Happy, 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 sleep. So hopefully that helped you to get to sleep so thank you for listening and uh, I'm really happy to be able to help lots of love bye